Well, well, well. It seems that things at Sony might be messier than we thought. A recent Bloomberg article has detailed all kinds of drama unfolding within the Sony family, including an obsession with blockbuster games, a canned sequel, unhappy developers, and frustration with PlayStation boss Jim Ryan. But what does this all mean? Continue your search for artifacts and eco. If the locals possess precursor items, you know what to do. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen of the internet. My name is Ty with Mojo Plays, and today we're taking a deep dive into the civil wars of PlayStation. Before we begin, we publish new videos all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Yes, it seems as though feuds and grudges are occurring within the Sony umbrella, particularly in the PlayStation sector. Published on April 9th, a Bloomberg article titled Sony's Obsession with Blockbusters is Stirring Unrest Within PlayStation Empire delved into what's going on behind the scenes, and it's far from pretty. In December 2020, John Garvin and Jeff Ross, directors of the 2019 PlayStation exclusive Days Gone, announced that they had departed Ben Studio. While neither of them provided a reason as to why they left, the Bloomberg article might have revealed the cause. Turns out a sequel to Days Gone was pitched to Sony, but rejected, although Ross can't confirm the game's cancellation due to an NDA. What's more, teams at Ben Studio were assigned to assist Naughty Dog on their projects instead. This move has outraged some fans who perceive it as Sony's response to Days Gone's lukewarm reception. It doesn't really seem fair when you consider the fact that it was Ben Studio's first new game since 2012's Uncharted Fight for Fortune, a card game spinoff of Naughty Dog's acclaimed action-adventure series. This guy was penitent. He accepted his punishment with grace. And Jesus brought him to paradise. Sony's disregard for Days Gone is pretty puzzling. While its development was fraught with delays and critics gave it mixed reviews, it was still one of the best-selling PlayStation games of the year, reportedly selling more than all of the studio's previous games combined. It's even being ported to Windows, so why not make a sequel that could potentially improve the formula and invigorate public interest? I knew that we were leaving everything behind. What did you do? Everything that mattered was gone. In an interview conducted by Twisted Metal and God of War creator David Jaffe, Garvin stated that, quote, Metacritic score is everything, end quote, to Sony. It's easy to understand why Sony would want to focus on Metacritic, given its own exemplary record in recent years. Looking at the Metacritic scores for Sony's big-budget first-party titles, the average Sony first-party game clocks in at a score of 80. Sitting at a 71 meta score, Days Gone is the fourth lowest rated of the bunch, only beating The Order 1886, Knack, and Knack 2. Through its marketing, Sony has shown a desire to be known for the best exclusives, to demonstrate that if you want exceptional quality, their platform is the place to be. Hold him back! Warning! Full deletion imminent. Go! Oh. Perfect shot! However, as we've seen before, this is yet another example of a publisher relying way too much on Metacritic to judge a game's performance. The problem with Metacritic, and reviews in general, is that most outlets don't update their reviews after patches are made. Days Gone was not exactly stable at launch, but for the most part, bugs have since been ironed out. This is a problem we even tried combating through our series review recap. We didn't feel it was fair to put out a review and not acknowledge whatever fixes might have been made sometime after launch and after our reviews published. So, like the games we cover, we wanted to adjust our criticisms accordingly, hence why we started doing Review Recap in late 2020. Hope you're right about your old lady, Deke. The other problem with how Sony is using Metacritic, if what Gavin says is true, is that you're letting numbers from reviewers determine if you reached your demographic. Sometimes one of those numbers is given by someone who doesn't care for that type of game. Why does the outlet let that person review the game in the first place? You got me, but it happens. This is why when I'm doing reviews here on Mojo Plays, me, Ty, I start every review by informing you of my background with the established IP. All units, level 
before mobilization. Location, Fisk Tower. Fisk. As an audience member, you should know where I, as a critic, as well as other critics, are coming from, and what potential biases they may have, and why I have or haven't played the series in question. Publishers like Sony ought to be approaching review scores in a similar manner. Be familiar with the outlet's history with your products, know what kinds of games the reviewer typically plays, and ask yourself if they share a voice in the demographic you're trying to cater to. There's more to meta scores than just numbers and blurbs, and when you're only viewing them as such, you're missing a ton of information. Don't, don't start, please. Oh, come on. Like you said, we did this. You and me. Ben Studio isn't the only one raising alarms, though. Naughty Dog appears to be in its own stew of monotony, with their current projects reportedly including a remake of The Last of Us and a sequel for Uncharted. There are a couple of things about this that has fans riled up. First off, Uncharted has already ended Nathan Drake's story with a nice bow. While there are characters like Chloe that could take the lead with their own narrative, why not just leave well enough alone? As for The Last of Us, we just got a sequel in 2020, and the 2014 remaster, while released on PS4, can be played on PS5 too. So does it really need a remake? Hey guys, how's it going? Shit's stirring up out there. Speaking with Insomniac's Ted Price on the podcast Game Maker's Notebook, co-president of Naughty Dog Evan Wells said that their choice of projects is team-driven. Yet, he also acknowledged the desire for a new Jack and Daxter game, both from fans and from Naughty Dog staff. Expressing admiration for Insomniac's efforts in revitalizing Ratchet and Clank, Wells admitted that he wishes they were doing the same for their IP. Quote, because there's still a lot of love for Jack and Daxter in the studio, end quote. Sorry, old boy, but in the scuffle, you took a big blow to the noggin. I marooned you on that island to hide your work from the Europans. Too little, too late. The question is then, why aren't Naughty Dog revisiting Jack and Daxter? After all, before The Last of Us, the studio was seriously considering it. The answer may relate back to what the Bloomberg article reveals, and also what we said in our video, how Xbox could dethrone the PS5. Sony just doesn't seem to have any interest in reviving older IPs, which would include Jack and Daxter. The franchise hasn't had a new entry since 2009's The Lost Frontier on PlayStation 2 and PlayStation Portable, which was not as well received as previous installments. As for the PS4 re-releases, there's a chance they may not have sold enough to impress Sony. Of course, this in turn could be tied back to Sony focusing all their marketing push on big-budget cinematic open-world games. So it seems the answer begins not with careful research or sensible thinking. Nay! As with many of fate's mysteries, it begins with but a small act. With all this going on behind the scenes, one can't help but ask, what exactly is going on over at Sony? Where's the company that excelled in not just quality, but variety? Where's the passion to deliver unique experiences and not just cinematic ones? What happened to the company that wanted to bring us fun events like PSX? Well, some fans have pointed fingers at PlayStation's latest boss, Jim Ryan. You will never leave this necropolis. <laughs> Ryan took over as head of PlayStation in April 2019 in place of John Cadera. However, his leadership has caused quite a stir in the PlayStation community as well as within the company. On March 1, 2018, Sony Interactive Entertainment announced a corporate restructure that saw Ryan gain a lot of control over SIE's sales and marketing departments. And what of Sean Layden, then head of Sony Worldwide Studios? While he was to continue managing games and platform quality, there were rumors of clashing philosophies around the time Layden left Sony. Game over, man. In the time after Ryan took over sales and marketing, and before Layden's departure in October 2019, PlayStation would heavily promote God of War, Marvel's Spider-Man, MLB The Show, and Death Stranding. And what of Concrete Genie and Medieval, their smaller titles? Layden would speak passionately about these games, especially the latter as he served as supervisor on the original game back in 1998. Well, both games were buried as Sony's marketing department spent Concrete Genie's launch day talking about PlayStation 5 with Wired and promoting the next Call of Duty on PlayStation Network, taking away any attention from the game. Medieval, on the other hand, 
was immediately forgotten due to enough Death Stranding trailers coming out to fill out a feature length movie. No joke, I personally remember this, because every day I was getting a new Death Stranding trailer in my subscription feed. Every. Damn. Day. Neither Concrete Genie nor Medieval had their sales numbers disclosed to the public, meaning Sony probably wasn't too thrilled by their performance. Although, Medieval 2 is supposedly getting a remake as well, but that's just a rumor. However, this wasn't the only clash that occurred since the 2018 restructure. For the past few years, Sony's Japan and America branches had been wrestling for control over the PlayStation brand. At least, that's according to a former Sony employee, verified by Reddit, who revealed this culture war through a Reddit AMA. The individual stated, quote, There's been a lot of internal competition for the control of the PlayStation brand, and over the past several years, you can clearly see where America has been winning. Relocation of HQ, shutdown of most of Japan studios, and the DualSense's cross-default confirm as a final FU are some of the notable examples off the top of my head." End quote. If what this individual says is true, this would explain why so many key developers have left Sony to form their own studios or join other companies. But I wasn't ready. You are not. Sony was once a thriving community that brought devs, fans, and executives together, all driven by the same passion. These rumors, however, warn of a growing preoccupation with reviews and a narrow focus on blockbuster hits, leading to discontent within Sony's own ranks. Sony is currently raking it in through PS5 sales, and its upcoming titles are on everyone's radars, but the company has a lot of bridges to repair with its fans and partners, and while continuing support for the PS3 and Vita stores would be a start, only time will tell if this will all come back to haunt them. Plenty of traitors. Not much left of us now, save for a few honest folks. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, there's more where that came from.